Today, we're going to explore the top three missing people caught on camera. Number three, Kanika Jenkins. Kanika Jenkins was a 19 year old girl from Chicago who went missing in September of 2017. Her friends and family described her as kind, hardworking, and happy. She had two different jobs and was trying to save up money to go to medical school. On September 8, 2017, Kanika went to a birthday party with some friends at the Crown Plaza Hotel in the Chicago suburb of Rosemont. It was a Friday night like any other and the party started around 11.30 p.m. After a long week of work and two jobs, Kanika was ready to blow off some steam and friends from the party noticed that she had been drinking a lot of cognac that night. Some of them said that she was acting differently than normal, but since she wasn't using any substances, they chalked it up to heavy drinking and a hard week. Oh, you want to do some? <laughs> Irritated. <laughs> Minutes before Kanika went missing, she was caught on camera in a Facebook Live video that was filmed by the birthday girl, Irene. Hey, Kanika. What? Check it out right quick. No, a few hours into the party, Kanika was seen wandering through the halls of the hotel with some of her friends. By around 4.30 a.m., no one had seen her in a while and they started to get worried. Concerned for her safety, Kanika's friends called her mom, who got there an hour later, around 5.30 a.m. 911, where's the address of emergency? Yes, I'm at the Crown, uh, Crown Plaza at O'Hare Airport. And I was calling because my daughter came to this uh, to a party here last night, a gathering with her friends. Now her friends, they say that they left on the front of the hotel and she's not able to be found now. She woke up the guests in every room looking for her daughter. But the hotel staff called the police as Teresa's search was disturbing a lot of people early in the morning. When the police arrived, they began to search the hotel and gather eyewitness accounts from everyone who had been at the party. Hotel staff wasn't able to release any of their video footage until Kanika was officially declared missing, so a good part of the day was spent filling out paperwork about the case. The official missing persons report was delivered to the hotel at 1.15 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. It took a while for them to go through all the hotel security footage, but around 10 p.m. Saturday night, they finally found the footage of Kanika Jenkins stumbling through the hotel hallways. Alone, she could be seen passing the front desk at 3.20 a.m., an hour before her friends had started to worry about her. For unknown reasons, she can be seen wandering the hotel's unused kitchen area. The police were able to use the video to narrow their search, and at 12.46 a.m. on Sunday, her body was discovered in the hotel's walk-in freezer. To this day, no one knows why Kanika was wandering around the hotel alone for so long or how she ended up in the walk-in freezer. The freezer was off camera and had a safety release door that was found to be in working order. Her death was ruled an accident, but the case was considered incomplete because of the odd circumstances. It doesn't appear that she was trapped in the freezer. She just inexplicably wandered into it and stayed there. In her drunken state, it's possible that she simply fell asleep there and never woke up. There's a missing piece to this puzzle that has kept internet theorists going back to this case again and again. Listen closely to this part of Irene's Facebook Live video. In the background, it sounds like Kanika's voice saying, help me. This and other strange things about this case have led many people to believe that Kanika's death was more than an accident. Tell us your thoughts about this case in the comments below. Number two, Stephen Kocher. Stephen Kocher disappeared in December of 2009 at the age of 30. Born into a highly religious family, Stephen was an avid member of his church where he could often be found leading services and participating in community events. He had been on several mission trips to provide aid and supplies to people suffering in third world countries, and in general, he was the kind of guy who could always be counted on to make others smile. He studied communications at the University of Utah and became a journalist for several newspapers. For a short while, he even worked for the government, but the Great Recession of 2008 hit hard for a lot of Americans, and Stephen was no exception. Eventually, he was forced to take a job handing out flyers for a local window washing company but the job wasn't enough to pay his bills. 
By November, he was falling behind financially and was at risk of losing his housing. Despite his troubles, Stephen continued to be a source of kindness and support for his community, doing regular volunteer work to help others. The story of Stephen's disappearance spans over several days. It started on Thursday, December 10th, 2009. Stephen's landlord had called his parents to let them know he was three months behind on his rent payments and had stopped returning his calls. Stephen's parents called him that evening to ask him about it, but he downplayed the situation, assuring them that everything was just fine. Now, sometime late that night or early the following morning, Stephen drove away from his home in St. George, Utah. He didn't tell anyone that he was leaving and to this day, no one knows exactly what motivated his spontaneous road trip. He drove north for over four hours until he had a stop for gas in Salt Lake City. He continued another two hours until he finally reached the home of an ex-girlfriend in Ruby Valley. The house actually belonged to her parents, who were very surprised when Stephen showed up out of the blue. His ex-girlfriend wasn't home, but her parents had always gotten along with Stephen, so they invited him in for lunch and the three of them talked for about two hours. After catching up, he told him he was passing through the area on his way to visit extended family in Sacramento, California. This is a detail that has puzzled investigators ever since Stephen's disappearance. You see, Stephen Kocher didn't have any family in California. Throughout that day, Stephen spoke on the phone twice with his sister and once with his mother. He never told either of them that he was out of town, but in the conversation with his mom, he assured her that he would be coming over for Christmas dinner. His mom also told him that she had deposited money into his bank account to cover his late rent, money that Stephen would never get a chance to use. Around 11 p.m. that night, he finally came home after nearly 24 hours on the road, with a total of 1,100 miles round trip. It is still completely unknown why Stephen went so far out of his way to try to visit his ex-girlfriend without telling anyone, including her. Stephen went to work the next day as usual, appearing to be the same happy-go-lucky guy as always. While he was handing out flyers for work, he noticed two little girls had accidentally been locked out of their home. There were no adults to let him in, so Stephen used his cell phone to call for their mom. She didn't answer, so he took it upon himself to find a neighbor who could watch them until their mom got home from work. Acts of kindness and concern for others were just a part of who he was. Later that day, Stephen got a surprise call from a member of his church who had found him a new job that would start in January. Between the money his parents had given him for rent and the church's help finding a new job, it appeared that Stephen's financial troubles were finally coming to an end. The very next day, Stephen went on a second mystery road trip. This time, he drove an hour and a half northeast to Overton, Nevada. No one knows why he went to Nevada that day, but we do know on the way back, he stopped at a gas station 45 minutes outside of St. George. Three hours later, he bought Christmas gifts at a Kmart in St. George, but there's no explanation for what he was doing during those three missing hours. After he left the Kmart, there was another two hour gap before a neighbor saw him get home at around 10 p.m. He was only home for about half an hour before neighbors saw him leave once again. The next morning, Stephen was caught on camera, leaving his car in a high-class neighborhood in Henderson, Nevada, right outside Las Vegas. Why did Stephen go to Henderson in the first place? Why did he leave his car in a neighborhood where he didn't know anyone? And where had he been all night? We may never know the answers. Stephen walked for more than 10 miles northeast and then two more miles north, or at least that's what most people assume. The video footage shows the last known whereabouts of Stephen Kocher, but his phone remained active, moving north. Over the next two days, the phone received several texts and calls and made one outgoing call to check Stephen's voicemail. On December 17th, three days after Stephen was caught on camera, the homeowners association in the neighborhood where he had left his car contacted his family. He was reported missing and his family, along with police, began a long search. They scoured the Las Vegas area and pleaded with the public to come forward with any information they might have. They found nothing, but the family has never given up hope. They hired a private investigator and have followed countless tips and clues to Stephen's whereabouts, but nothing more has ever been discovered and Stephen's disappearance remains an unsolved mystery. Number one, Dr. Talika Patrick. Talika Patrick was a graduate student at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. She was in the process of completing her residency at a local hospital about to achieve her life's dream of becoming a doctor. T 
Tilika was incredibly smart and had always done really well in school. She was known for her kindness and intelligence and had a happy marriage with the love of her life. Shortly after moving to Michigan, however, things had started going wrong for Talika. She had begun to show signs of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and her husband was extremely worried about her. When I urged her to get help, she told me that she didn't need any help and that I was trying to destroy her career. He begged her to get help and at first she agreed, but when she realized that being diagnosed with a mental illness could put her medical career at risk, she changed her mind. She divorced her husband and moved to Michigan alone to continue pursuing her dream of becoming a doctor. Instead of seeking help, Talika tried to hide the growing signs of mental illness, but she had already begun to slip. A few months before she moved to Michigan, she became obsessed with a pastor and vocalist from the Michigan town of Grand Rapids. She attempted to contact him through social media, but Pastor Marvin Sapp did not respond. After moving to the nearby town of Kalamazoo for her residency, Talika began driving to Grand Rapids to attend the same church as Marvin Sapp. The number of messages she sent him increased. There were reportedly hundreds of them, and she began telling her family, friends, and colleagues that Sapp was her fiance. At one point, while Sapp was out of town, Talika drove to his house and talked with his children. Sapp was a single parent, and this incident seriously freaked him out. He filed for a restraining order to keep Talika away from him and his children, and the order was granted. Talika respected the restraining order, but she still refused to get help. From September to early December of 2013, Talika sent a variety of strange messages to her brother and her friends. She seemed to believe that God had given her a psychic link to Marvin Sapp, and that the two were meant to be together despite the restraining order and Marvin's apparent lack of interest. She was also posting about these thoughts on Twitter until December 5th when she suddenly deleted all of her social media accounts. Buried amid thousands of tweets under the handle Talika Patrick are references to an unnamed love interest and a world underground. Quote, I am excited to spend time with you because we can go underground together. Continuing, my nuts are people and I take them underground into my secret world. I am like a squirrel. Squirrels take their nuts underground and then eat them when mostly no one is looking. After she deleted everything, she went to work at the hospital and stayed for the entire shift. No one seemed to notice that anything was off about Talika that day, but when she left work after her shift, she left her cell phone, her badge, and anything else that identified her as a hospital employee behind in her locker. The only thing she took with her was her pager. Talika hitched a ride with one of her coworkers, even though her car was still in the hospital parking lot. She claimed to have lost her wallet and it was raining pretty hard, so he agreed to drop her off at a nearby hotel, where she said she would be meeting a friend. He also gave her $100 since all of her money had been in that missing wallet. Talika's coworker would later recount the strangeness of the incident, saying that she had been acting very odd and that she had left him with a rather mysterious warning. She told him not to go to the hospital's prayer group the next morning, but she didn't say why. What happened next was even more strange. It's me, so I finally got done. A video released after Talika Patrick's disappearance shows her walking into the hotel lobby. She is turned away by the hotel staff because she doesn't have the required ID to book a room and can be seen getting into the hotel shuttle van. The shuttle driver later claimed that, at her request, he took her back to the hospital. Worried for her safety in the large, dark parking lot, he parked the shuttle and waited there until he saw a car leave. He assumed the car was Talika's and went back to the hotel. That thoughtful shuttle driver was the last person to see Talika Patrick alive. Her car was found an hour and a half south of the hospital she worked at, 40 feet from the road. It had a flat tire and her wallet was still inside, but her keys were missing. After speaking with a mechanic who had been working on the car recently, police discovered that the car was not safe to drive and Talika had known that when she decided to head south. It was unclear where Talika had been headed, but police, canines, and FBI agents searched the woods near her car for days until it became covered in snow and ice, putting the investigation on hold. They even searched a lake nearby, but weren't able to find any evidence of Talika ever being there. The possibility remained open that after getting a flat tire, she had simply hitchhiked to wherever she had been headed. It was possible that she decided to lay low for unknown reasons and simply didn't want people to know where she was. 
Partway through the investigation, in late December of 2013, a YouTube channel created by Talika was discovered. The channel had several videos posted, all of which featured the now missing Talika speaking to the camera. She appeared to be addressing a specific unnamed person. In one video titled, My Awesome Day, Talika recounts her daily activities, singing along casually to a radio in the background and ending the video with a loving goodnight to the unnamed person. The last video Talika ever posted was uploaded on November 10th, less than one month before she disappeared. It was titled, Surprise, Final Video. Once again, she addresses the unnamed person, showing off a meal she prepared for the two of them and lamenting the fact that the other person couldn't be there to share it with her. The case came to a close on April 6, 2014, when a fisherman found Talika's body on the shore of Lake Charles, near the place where a car had been found five months earlier. Police said that she had drowned and that it had been nothing more than a tragic accident. While police have ruled it as an accident, some people believe that Marvin Sapp may have played a role in her disappearance. If you love mysteries and spooky stories, be sure to like this video and subscribe. In addition, a video is going to pop up right now. Click on it and watch.